we are getting to the end of the trimester, so we're up to 4-5, day one, which is on page 135. Now, this is a pre-lesson, so I'm just going to try to summarize the major important topics from the top. That can be kind of overwhelming, looking at all that and think, man, I'm responsible for all of that? Yeah, but most of this you already know. It's just kind of encrypted, I guess. It's like made to look difficult when it isn't. I'm going to prove that to you. But there is something new for you to understand today. And that is, this is what you guys are used to. You're used to the old coordinate plane, x, y axis. So if you plot at that point, you go 1, 2, 3, 1, 2. There it is. I'll call that point A. I'll call this point B. So you go 1, 2, 3, 4, <clears throat> down 1, and there's point B. Ooh, yeah, you better be bored by that. But now I'm going to connect this to the new stuff. See, if you recall, you had stuff like this, which is 7i. If you learned that in Algebra 2, good, you should have. So there are these crazy things called imaginary numbers. That's where the letter i comes from. What is i? i is the square root of negative 1. You're not going to have to worry about that too much. You just have to know that there's a coordinate plane which has a real axis, just like you had here. But then you've got an imaginary axis. See, this is kind of new. And that's going to introduce you to a whole other uh, way of talking about things and looking at things. And here's how you plot a point on an imaginary axis. Now, you've got to get used to these fancy terms. Once you get past the fancy terms, and you realize, oh, it's really not that big of a deal, then the math kind of comes easy. So, see this right here? 2 minus 3i, I'm just stealing it right from here. This right here is called standard form. So there's the fancy term for this. What this means is, for me to take it from the world of the known to the unknown, or vice versa, think of this as 2 comma negative 3i, and think of it like you were thinking of this. So here's your axis. You would just go two to the right, zoop, and then you'd go down three i. So one, two, three. And that's where this, now get ready for this, point is. See, technically you don't have to go here. You just look at this and you go, oh, that means two to the right on the real axis, down three on the imaginary axis. I'm sorry, I didn't go straight down, but there we go. That corrects a lot of mistakes there. So that's how you're going to get kick started, okay? You're dealing with a whole new coordinate plane. You've got the real axis, the imaginary axis, and that's just warm up. That is just warm up, okay? I and mean, you've heard me say this a lot, but here's the meat and potatoes. Remember, we were converting things from rectangular form to polar. And then we converted things from polar equations to rectangular equations. Now, you've got things in standard form, and you're going to convert them to trigonometric form. You see how this stuff has trig stuff, and this doesn't? So there's the difference. Trigonometric form is going to look like this, generally. And we're going to have to go from here to here. But then we're going to be, we're going to be asked to go from here to here. And that's just to familiarize yourselves with these two new topics, standard form, trigonometric form. So let's just try one sample problem. Oh, by the way, R, they give you that formula, is the square root of A squared plus B squared. That's just the Pythagorean theorem, which makes you think, wait a minute, you're still dealing with right triangles? Yes. And you're going to say, well, how? I don't see that. Well, notice, we have an angle. That's, again, how far you spin your radius, and that's what this is right here. That's what R is, radius. And then you discover the radius, you discover the degree measure that you flip the spinner, and then you put things where it belongs. From here. So, we already plotted this point, but remember, this is the end of your spinner. So, if we think of it, there's my real axis, there's my imaginary axis, 
I'm going to go two to the right, bing, bing, three down, bing, bing, bing. There's my point, but there it is right there. So the question is, how do I build a right triangle so I can use Pythagorean theorem? Do not change the basics. You always go back to the X, which in this case is just a real axis. So that's two to the right, and it's down three. Now there is no two, three, four family, so a squared plus b squared equals c squared. That's nine and four, which is 13. Take the square root of both sides, and I got the square root of 13. Now watch this. I'm just going to put that right here, the square root of 13. Now i got to find how far I spun my spinner. And then I just put that where it belongs, and I'm done. Kaputs. Um, but there is a little tricky, hidden, assumed rule, and it's right by example two. It probably should have been written up here somewhere in the instructions, but your theta... It can be greater than or equal to zero, but strictly less than 2 pi, which means less than 360, greater than zero. Also, it's implying that it must, theta must be positive. That's another little hint that you need to pick out from this little clue that uh, should have been listed in the top there, but throwing that in for free, but it's very important. So what I'm trying to find really is this and then I'll discuss what I mean by that in a minute. Now how in the world could I ever find that? Well going back to old stuff we've been doing, if I had this situation I could say hey that's my opposite, this is my adjacent, so I could go tangent of theta is equal to negative 3 over 2 which is just negative 1.5. Now I'd have to go second tangent. And of course, you've got to have your calculator for that. And I'm going to go second tangent, negative 1.5. That gives me negative 56.3. So this guy right here is negative 56.3. And if you're taking a multiple choice quiz or test, and that thing's like option A, you're going to be very tempted to circle it. But remember, this clue says, uh, 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 negatives are not acceptable. See, it's not wrong. You just need to read the clues. So what that means is, i got to answer this. How far did I spin my spinner? So now i got to go 360 minus 56.3, which would be, what would that be? 303.7 degrees. Now, I found it. Now I need to put it in here. 303.7, 303.7. You see there's not much room to squeeze that in, but now you have it. Now I'm going to save for the packet uh, sample problems how to get from here to here. All right? But that's a good warm-up.